In 2009, former Director of Economic Monitoring in the Internal Security Organization, Teddy Sezche, was sentenced to 10 years for embezzling 120 million shillings meant for the Global Fund. Two years later, former Managing Director of the National Social Security Fund, David Chandi Jamwa, was sentenced to 12 years in jail for causing financial loss of 3 billion shillings. The latest conviction was this year when the Anti-Corruption Court sentenced former Permanent Secretary Geoffrey Kazinda to five years for forgery, abuse of office that saw government lose 50 billion shillings in the famous OPM scandal. Those securing these convictions and the government are in the fight against corruption. Some legislators feel that efforts should be focused on recovering the funds back to the National Treasury. Much in the East legislator John Simboa is moving a private member's bill to amend the Anti-Corruption Act 2009 to achieve this. The Anti-Corruption Amendments Bill 2013 seeks to provide mandatory confiscation of property of persons convicted of corruption charges to recover the losses, if any. Members of the civil society headed by the Anti-Corruption Coalition Uganda and the National Catholic Commission for Justice and Peace are already discussing the bill and are scoring their input in support of the bill. Previously we could see people being convicted and many uh, are in prison. But the relatives, the friends and the associates are busy enjoying the, the fruits of, of, of that thuggery, we call it thuggery. One of the contentious clauses in the bill is Clause 7, which seeks to provide for mandatory confiscation of any property of a convicted person without having to prove that the property was derived directly or indirectly from an act constituting an offence under this act. Legal minds, however, say that this could be challenged. When you go to, uh, to, uh, to attach somebody's property, I know it's a challenge because I'm married to, to my wife, he's corrupt, but I must also have property. If, if, uh, if, so just attaching that because my wife was involved in property, in, in theft or swindling, is unconstitutional. It is a legal, it's a non-legal principle that he who alleges must prove. So it will be prosecution to prove that this property was acquired through, through corruption or any form of impropriety. So the challenge I have with this law is the burden of proof and, and, and presumption of innocence. Another point of contention is Clause 6, which seeks to criminalize the failure to give information to a police officer or special investigator. An offender could face three years in jail or pay a fine of four million shillings. The bill also seeks for confiscation costs to be met by persons convicted while enforcing the court order. Although the bill has received support from some legislators, there are some reservations as to how fight will go to address corruption. Well, first the bill addresses one form of corruption. It looks at those people who steal public resources directly from the constituted fund, money which has been appropriated. But it does not address the budget corruption, the negative expenditure, which are embedded within budgets. Starting from the national budget, you have seen we have 750 billion workshop seminars. You go to the local government, same story, all through. The bill was first tabled in parliament in late August amidst resistance from government officials and committed to the relevant committee, which should report back to the House within 45 days. Solomon Serwanja, NTV.